Hello friends and welcome back to Max Electronics. My name is Max and today we will be looking at the 10 watt RGB floodlight and converting it to addressable WS2811 floodlight. So stick around. So on the bench today we've got 10 watt standard LED floodlight from China. A while back I bought quite a few of those, um, probably about 20 of them, they used to be $3 each so I think maybe that was last sale because I can't find any more of those floodlights now. Um, this one's got to back off but um, they're just normal white, they've got an LED driver, just standard floodlight, they're actually quite good compared to the new ones. The new ones that I've reviewed in this video you can have a look, uh, it's, it is horrific, it's horrible. Uh, so those are quite good. And I've already done earlier a, a version of WS, it's not on YouTube, but I've done it um, WS2811 version of the controller for those lights. And it uses resistors and a diode, so there's a circuit board, let me zoom in for you. So here's a circuit board that I've done as a prototype, just to test it out. We've got a 5 volt regulator here, we've got WS2811 chip here, uh, 33 ohm resistors on input and output. We've got a diode, just for polarity protection. Uh, then we've got uh, PNP transistors here because that output is a, is a low high. Then we've got NPN and uh, then it goes to actually resistors. So I've got a couple of resistors on the back here for uh, blue, for green and for red. And just for the, you know, to drop the voltage a little bit, I've put a little diode, well, big diode here. That's the common positive. So, and it worked, I've trialed it, I've plugged it in, you know, I've replaced off this LED with a full color one, because that was just a normal warm white light. I've plugged it in, I've left it on working for a week, and it performed well. There was no heat, it didn't heat up, there was no problems. Uh, it's just, yeah, it works, works just fine, there's no problem with it. However, uh, since time went by, that was quite a while back that I've done it, now there is a time to make a new one uh, using the PT1514115 uh, four, four, one, one controller. So it's a little uh, driver for the LEDs. Here they are. Just a little tiny controller. So it's a um, uh, SOT89-5 um, um, SOT um, footprint. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first uh, solder it like with a wire joints, you know, just to join the parts and see how it performs. I've already chosen 68 micro Henry coils here, so I've got a, quite a few of those. I've got the controller, so my plan is, I've done a little thing here, which is a quite messy, but just to get myself while I'm designing a prototype. So uh, it's going to go from um, WS2811 onto the PNP transistors. And from transistors, it's going to go to this PT4115 uh, LED driver, which is capable of driving 10 and 20 watt LEDs. So it's going to be quite universal. So I will not have to use those resistors at all. And the board will be double sided and it will have uh, pretty much just components on one side and it'll be universal. I'm already designing the first component. So what I'm going to do, uh, just to show you, this is those cheap eBay things, uh, the addressable LEDs that I bought a while back. So let's power the controller up and have a look at them. This is unable to operate just because I haven't, um, I don't know if you can see the display, uh, just because I haven't plugged in the network, but then it'll go into test mode anyway. No network, yeah. Entering test mode, there we go. So as you can see, they're working just fine. And if I plug my RGB, let me just uh, change. So there we go, so you can see they, they're in line now. And let me plug that in. So as you can see, this one works just fine, very bright.
that's just color chase, different colors. That's some sort of a strobe thing. So it works. That's actually a better example. Funny enough, that's exactly the same lights that I have sitting above the desk here for the lighting, except they're warm white, so I will be changing them to cold white. Oh, that's bright. But I like the colors. It's it's quite um, true. I've it's I remember it's taken me a while to get the correct values of resistors to drive the LEDs. They are slightly warm. And by slightly, I mean maybe five degrees above ambient temperature so it's about 20 here so they may be 25 degrees uh, but yeah let's uh, let's uh, get the schematic done so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna desolder the leds from here well get rid of the resistors as well i'm gonna solder the one of the leds since i'm just gonna do for red legs let's say a driver i'm gonna connect uh, that red led and the positive to uh, a circuit and then I'm going to patch into here just after the uh, PNP um, transistor is what I'm going to connect to the uh, PT4115 chip and just to see if it'll work fine. Uh, once it works uh, then I'm going to continue designing it on a computer and we'll see if I need to tweak anything. I've made a little um board not a board but you know just connecting all the components here so we've got our uh, little um, pt driver right here we've got a inductor 68 um, micro henry we've got a 10 uh, nanofarad capacity here we've got a shotkey diode here and we've got a, a couple of watt um, 0.22 ohm resistor. I had to keep checking the resistor and changing it to different values just to get it right uh, for the specs of the RGB LED. So at the moment if I plug it in, let me zoom out. I've connected just green color again. I'm using just one driver for now just to get the colors correct and get everything correctly. So it is connected to green and if I plug it in, as you can see the green lights up and it's consuming at the moment 200 sorry there's a dodgy connector on the power supply 280 milliamps just for green color which is just right uh, the specs for the leds suggest 320 milliamps so i'm just 40 milliamps under which is uh, i'd like to keep it that way because um you know if you're driving it to, to its max it's going to burn out faster i'd rather have it just slightly dimmer which is not going to be noticeable by much but to make sure that it's going to last a while so obviously those components uh, the values will be the same the way i'm designing it but obviously this is just to just to quickly connect it and see how it works the resistor is going to be 1206 for example the diode is going to be sod 2323 so components are going to be very small and uh, the whole board is going to be probably about three centimeters wide maybe by three i'm not sure yet <clears throat> but it's going to be a small board just a Pretty much enough to fit into here uh, that's it so now I've tuned this the next step I am going to connect negative well actually positive negative and the one of the lines to this transistor here just to see if it'll or to the green one for that matter and uh, we're gonna try it out and see if it'll uh, drive it well if it is uh, i'm going to check the colors then i'll uh, take the note of the transistor that i used before i'm pretty sure it's a ahb or something like that and uh, we're going to be going to be rebuilding the board again so let me hook it up and we'll test it out i've uh, attached the um, positive negative and the um, pin for the PNP mos uh, well, transistor into the DIMM pin directly. I've just experimented before I did this, so I've already done that. So I thought uh, usually everyone for some reason, I've looked at the what people are doing as well and they're putting a resistor between the, um, you know, the input of that uh, PT4115, the, just before it, the DIMM pin, they put a resistor there. 
I've experimented, experimented just before and compared the brightness. If I put a resistor there, then there is a small step that doesn't register. So the actual light goes uh, black before the lowest um, gray point, let's say that. So I've soldered it directly to 5 volts output this way. If you have a look, uh, here's a comparison. So this is... Um, Starting from this pin, uh, this LED, then it goes to this one. I'll uh, turn the lights off just so you can see better. And I'll power it up now. So, watch those two LEDs. They go out sim simultaneously, which, which is, this one goes out first, and then this one, which is supposed to do that. So there is different levels of brightness and it's working just fine but if I would have put a resistor there then there's a step would be missing. So this one would be going out too early. But it works. So now I'm going to design it on the computer properly and um, make a PCB. So give me a, a couple of days. For you it'll be instant. So give me a few, well, time and I'll come back with a ready prototype of the PCB. Now that I've tested everything and everything is working great and I know which components to use, I'm going to be making that prototype. Once it's done, I'll send it off to uh, PCB manufacturing and get quite a few of them done. So stick around. The board is now ready and um, this is just prototype. It's a bit shitty, turned out a bit shitty. I've scratched it a bit just here. The other side I didn't laminate with green because um, that doesn't have any components, so I don't need a solder resist on that. The green is obviously, it's a protection, but also it is for solder resist, so there's no components here. It is, however, been tinned, so it shouldn't rust. Uh, the, if you're interested how I make the boards like this, uh, obviously this is not one of my best boards, but if you are interested, uh, then click on this link up here, so uh, that link actually up here. So this will... Um, show you exactly how I make those boards. Circuit boards from the JLC PCB have arrived and they look awesome. I ordered quite a few of them. So let's have a look at it. Uh, this is the circuit board for that driver. So it turned out really good. They are, uh, yeah, great stuff. So if, if you actually want to order those, my design that I've done, uh, all the files are on Patreon. So the schematics, the component list, everything is there and the Gerbert files as well. So all you need to do is just take that zip file, download it from Patreon and uh, send it off to JLCPCB and they'll manufacture it. And it didn't cost much at all. Uh, by the way, I'm not sponsored by them at all. Uh, it's just the cheapest price that I found. So I've got it ready and I've also ordered the stencil. So I'll be using a stencil. I could use, you know, the syringe pump that I've got there and do the drops each by one by one. But the reason I ordered stencil was only $8, I think, uh, Australian. So it'd be seven, probably six or seven American. Uh, the only reason I ordered the stencil is because I've got so many of them and I'm going to be using the oven to get the components in. And I know you're probably going to be commenting that, oh, well, you know, doing it, you know, at home with the DIY stuff, you're using a professional oven. Uh, you can do it with a hot air gun. That's absolutely fine. It's just because I've got so many of them, I'm going to be using the oven. But you don't have to use a stencil or the oven. You can just do the drops uh, with a simple syringe like this one, you know, with a needle on the end, with a solder paste. And then just place the components, which I'm going to be placing by hand, and just use hot air gun to solder them in. Or you can do it with a normal soldering iron one by one, but that's going to be, you know, quite a lot of soldering. So I've also got the components ready here. So I've got them ready for two uh, of those boards. So we're going to be making two of them. And I'll show you what I've done with the stencil. That's all the components. That's for two. Actually, I didn't get the coils yet, did I? No, not yet, but I'll get more coils. Now let's have a look at the stencil. I'm really happy with those circuit boards. Again, when you're ordering, you don't have to order black. You can order any color you like, and I'm pretty sure it's going to cost the same money as those ones. So let's have a look at the stencil. It came in a huge packaging, so here it is. It's probably A3 size. And inside, I've already actually done, I'll show you how I'm going to be doing it. 
since I don't have a stencil machine. So it came like that with a, I guess that's drilling from the drill machines in there, just as a protective cover. And underneath we've got this nice shiny stencil. And what I have done, I'm gonna remove that film because we're gonna be using it anyway. There we go, we don't need that. So you can just see the stencil there. Let me just angle it so you can see it. That's the SMG stencil. And what I've done is, I've uh, double -sided, used double-sided tape. I used the original backing that it came with. And I've taped two boards to the size of my uh, circuit board. So now I can adjust the tight fit so I can slide that here, put that down. And as you can see, you can't see it, but the pads are matching perfectly. You can just see actually maybe. And then I'm gonna use this squeegee and just squeegee that on. So I have never done this method before. I'm just gonna try it out. Seriously, this is the first time. So I'm gonna squirt some of the solder paste here and just squeegee that on and see what happens, if it's gonna turn out nice or not. So uh, let's give that a go. Yeah, that light is really annoying. I'll see if I can put something black maybe, um, just to stop that light. Yeah, that's kind of better. Anyway, let's give that a go. So um, I'm gonna squeeze out some of the solder paste here. That should be plenty. And let's try squeezing it through. If I get that there. Okay, so this is, I've never done this before, so that's gonna be interesting. That was a barcode scanner. All right, let's have a look if that worked. Okay, yeah, that worked uh, really well, actually. That's pretty cool. So yeah, you can see just the right amount of solder on there. Let's do the second board. Yeah, that worked out pretty good as well. I might do a third board as well and just fill with the components later because there's still solder paste left and I don't want to waste that. So let's do one more. All right, uh, now I'm going to clean this up and uh, start putting components on camera. So here we go. assembled the first board and as you can see it's pretty cool uh, you may notice that some of those components are kind of a little bit off sideways that's all right because uh, once it's in an oven the liquid tension will straighten them up except the larger ones like the coils for example those reactors they will not get lined up because they're so heavy all the smaller components they will realign themselves as you will see so I've done the first board also I'm uh, not installing anything on J1 because J1 would be a short jumper if you want a high-speed IC and I'm not installing anything on D5 because they actually, in uh, parallel, um, those two diodes, it's actually used for a second if you have a 20 watt light. So just one diode is good. So I'm gonna do the other two boards and then we'll stick them in the oven. Okay, the boards are now in the oven. Here they are, still raw. Oh, out of focus. So I'm gonna close that and excuse the mess around. So we'll turn the oven on. And we'll set it to the usual profile. And there we go. So that will take around seven minutes. So I'll be back in seven minutes and we'll check it out. 
Okay, so the oven's now been cooling for about um, three minutes or so after it's done. So let's stop the that and see what happens inside. All right, so they look pretty good so far. Let's get to the bench and get close and intimate with those boards. Here is the board up close. It turned out really well. Here's the second one as well, right here. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that result. The only thing that transistor's a bit tilted, but the rest turned out really, as I said, they've sat down, see as they, so they stride, they weren't stride before, but after the oven, the liquid tension pulled them back in their place. So except that little transistor, but that's all right. It's connected, there's no problems there. So the next step now will be to plug it in and uh, test it out. So let's uh, get that floodlight on the table. Here it is. I'm going to solder the um, LED to the board. And I'm going to solder that little connector, which will allow us to connect the data. So I'll do that off camera and then we'll test it. I've tacked, um, just tacked the light in. So it's just the 10 watt RGB LED. I've tacked it on because uh, I'm going to, we're going to test the board first. And after that, I'll have to take it off anyway and, you know, make the slots. So I've also done those, the width of those two holes here is exactly the same as those screws. So this way, when you're lining up, you don't have to measure, you just score a line across here and across here. And then you measure the distance between and just drill the hole. So it'll fit just here perfectly like that. And also the output here will be matching with, uh, where is the cover gone? I'll show you uh, if I can find where I put the cover. Oh, there it is. So that would be matching with the uh, output. As you can see where the output is, is just, again, on the right distance here. So why will be going straight out. So I thought of that. Um, and it's going to be facing again. The, all the components will be facing the light itself. Uh, also, because I'll be using this outside, I'll spray the protective lacquer over the top of the circuit board so it'll coat it in this uh, thin layer of lacquer to make sure that no moisture or anything can get inside. Anyway, I've got the power supply and everything hooked up to those lights. They just set to black so the lights work. Let's plug that in. And we got... Oh, there we go. Now it's connected. So uh, let's go to green red blue all the colors are there that's white and it's matching as you can see the fading is good It's just random. This is just random white flash. One of my favorite when it's set to fast, I think. Or maybe it's the... Oh, no, it is. So I'll just have to set them... Speed. I'm really sorry about that noise. Yes, yeah, so that's the fast one. That was the actual oven. Sorry about that. I had to set the oven to cooling now. So yeah, that's one of my favorites modes uh, that flashes. So that light works fine. Now I'm going to get into drilling, scoring the lines across here and drilling it and tapping it so we can attach the board. So I'm going to turn that off and disorder the board and do that. So by the way, so if again, if you want to make this exact same board um, and get a schematic, it's on Patreon. Just search for Max Electronics on Patreon. Schematics, the blueprints, like I said, all the component list and everything is there. Um, everything literally is schematics, just yeah, search for it there. 
So let's start drilling and attaching the board to the um, light. So I'm gonna spray it first. I'm gonna put a lacquer on it. Uh, what I usually do, I will tape off those contacts with red, green, and blue, and I'll tape off the contacts with the pins. Then I'll spray the whole board, and then I'll remove the tape and attach the wires and spray a little bit over the top. This way, um, you know, it's easier to, or you can just spray it like that, it doesn't matter. So let me undo this and fix it, and I'll be back. I've drilled the holes here, as you can see. I've scored the lines and I drilled the holes on that plate. So I'm going to be using those 10 millimeter standoffs. I've got the shorter screws to go on the back to attach it to the plate itself. And I've got those longer ones to attach the PCB to the standoffs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach it all together. So that's going to go like that. And that's going to go over the top here and it's giving you a perfect distance for a standoff for the wires to come through and everything else. So let me assemble this together and put it into the light. So once that's attached, uh, we're gonna be having a look what it looks like without the back off, of course. Here it is lacquered and with the cable attached. So it fits there just perfectly. I had to silicone those holes just in case as well. Uh, the thermal expansion where the wires are going through that would be perfect because the backside would stay cool If this would head heat up which it won't uh, All the air pressure would go into the second chamber here, which is sealed as well But uh, once it cools down the pressure will be going back into the first uh, LED uh, uh, Chassis so that fits there just fine. Uh, let's just put it together and plug it in so I'm going to put the back on and the grommet I'm using, by the way, this cable, it's a multi data cable. So I'm using orange and red as a positive and blue and black as negative, green as data out and uh, white as data in. So it's, it's a multi core, so I'm not using all the cores, but the thickness of it fits perfectly to the grommet. So let me show you that grommet here. Uh, the rubber is just perfectly, it's tight enough to slide across the cable. So it's a small tail. Uh, very small tails because the reason is well it's not that small it's probably 30 centimeters long the reason for that is that uh, that's going to go into the ground into t section and uh, that's going to split so you can ru run three wires uh, like positive negative and data and then you split the cable and you'd go uh, positive negative continues on in uh, parallel to all the lights and the data will go in series so you split the data one and the data will go in, come out into the back into the three core cable, continue on to the next slide. So I'm gonna put this uh, cover back on, and then we'll plug it in. Here it is, ready to go with the back on, with the grommet on, everything's connected in line with the, this uh, BC controller, the, the giant one that I've, you've seen before. So let's go into the uh, mode and see how it works. So green's working fine. Red, blue, white. Oh, not that yellow. Cyan, magenta, white. And just color changing. So it is working just fine. Now, uh, I will be selling the kits, so you can buy already a ready circuit board, already uh, populated. Uh, if you head, head to Patreon, there will be uh, pricing and everything there. Or you can buy a kit, which is just a circuit board and all the components separately, and you can solder them in yourself. So it'll come literally just circuit board with components. You don't get the floodlight itself or anything like that. You'll get the components, you get the everything you need to put it into your own floodlight. So uh, that's, uh, if you want to get schematics again for it, blueprints, and you want to order your own circuit boards and see how it works, and me explaining the schematics, head to the Patreon. It's all there, and the video is actually got extra, which is the schematic explanation. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that bell button. My name is Max, see you next time, bye!